Can we turn this up a little bit? Can we turn the vocal mic up a little bit? It's so good to see you this morning um, on this winter day. We're cold out there, but warm and hard in here, aren't we? And so, so wonderful to have you here. We have lots of a different announcements, um, to, and so if you would please share the announcements, Terry. Thank you. Good morning. I don't, I don't know if this is still on or not. It is. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. It wasn't on first service, so. Um, just wanted to remind you to look at your inserts in your bulletin. You have one with um, several announcements on it. The children's ministry is, um, there's an information about that. They are going to be having an Easter egg hunt. So we are in need of individually wrapped candy and plastic Easter eggs. So if you have any of those or would like to donate towards that, we would appreciate it. There is a box or a bucket in the um, office area that you can bring your, your donations in for that. But that would be very much appreciated. There's an announcement about Lent, and if you would like to get the publication, the daily publication, please um, check that off on the uh, registration sheet, and she will make sure that you get that um, on a, is it weekly basis or daily? Daily basis, okay. The church office has some more Christmas ornaments, and I understand that they are different than some of the past ones, so check them out and see if there's some that you would like to purchase for next Christmas. And Funeral Committee is always looking for new people who would like to help by um, providing a dish for anybody who has a, has a funeral. So if you are able to help in that manner, please uh, sign that or let, let Melissa know so that she's aware of that. And then you have an um, insert about um, family night. That will be happening on March 11th. Uh, 5.30 is to come in and get prepared, set up, find your spot. And then 6 o'clock, there's going to be movie starting. It's Encanto. Um, I understand that's a good movie. So if you're interested in that, and they're going to be serving pizza and other goodies and that type of thing. So that's a family night, especially if you have kids or grandkids that would be interested in coming to that. That would be very, very good to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do birth dates, and then we have another announcement by Jan. So on the 28th, we have Alex Allisey and Jack Barnes and Barb Hale. The second, we have Sue Truen. The third, Steve Benson. The fourth, Liebenette Grimm and Donna Wainscott. The fifth, Nada Worrell. And then we have two anniversaries, Ron and Linda Daskowitz and Gary and Tina Geyer. Those are both on the 3rd of March. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to those people. And Jan? Good morning, everybody. It's that time of year again. Um, I'm looking for help for the treasure sale. I've got two sign-up sheets with me. This is for the box brigade and then for working down in Friendship Hall, putting the chairs away and setting up tables and then putting the boxes under the table as they come down. The other sign-up sheets are out in the hall, except I forgot a very important one and that's the one to help unpack. So. <laughs> We wouldn't have a sale if nobody unpacks the boxes, but this is one of the reasons why I'm no longer going to be doing the treasure sale. I'm just not sharp like I used to be. And uh, Shelly is going to be taking over, and uh, when I announce the amount that we get uh, from the sale, uh, we'll be talking more about Shelly. So, um, just so you know, this is going to continue. Shelly will be doing a great job. I've been working with her. She'll do wonderfully. Um, okay, I'm going to pass these two around, and um, thank you for any help. And it's going to be a big sale, so we're going to need a lot of help. Thank you, folks.
For those of you that didn't hear, someone was asking when the sale is going to be. It's the 17th, 18th, and 19th of March. So be looking forward to that. And Jan, you said people can bring a lot more stuff, right? <laughs> okay, to the 23rd. So bring it all. Keep them busy, okay? So, and sign up, sign up. I don't want to have to pass that thing around to twice, okay? So let's get signed up on the first time. It's wonderful to have you here today. I'm going to be talking about the devil today and what a bad guy the devil is. How many agree with me that the devil is a bad guy? Okay, we're going to be talking about that. Um, God is good, the devil is bad. Our sermon quote is, when Satan comes knocking at your door, simply say, Jesus, could you get that door for me? And then our biblical focus is Matthew 4, 1, that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Let us bow our heads and hearts for our musical call to worship. Thank you, choir. Our liturgy is on the inside cover of your bulletin. If you would please open that up. I will read the light print if you will read the dark print along with Terry. These are scriptures about temptation. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is wheeling, but the flesh is weak. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let us stand together for our hymn of praise on page 89. Page 89, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let's stand together, 89. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowery fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and revealing, for blessing ever blessed. Well, spring, caution, <coughs> depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. 
Love divine is reigning o'er us, binding all within its span. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Good morning. Welcome. Turn around and wave to those around you. Say, welcome to God's house. Also want to remind you, I think afterwards we have refreshments in the parlor. Is that right, Miss Kitty? Yeah, so look forward to that. Yes. And so, good stuff, okay? As we come to our time of prayers, um, Larry Mitchell, who comes to the second service, was in the hospital earlier this week, so we pray for him. Also want to pray for the situation in the Ukraine with Russia invading. And during our time of prayer, I'm going to have a time of... Um, prayer, silent prayer for you to pray and ask God for, to bring peace to that part of the world. So we will do that. What are some other prayer requests that we would like to share um, together? Are there any? Yes. Well, we love you, Miss Alice. We love you. And so that's what a church family does, Okay. So we're so glad to see you. Thank you for bringing her. Okay. Yes. Taking my cue from Alice, I wish to thank everyone who showed their sympathy towards me or John. Well, Beverly, we love you, thank you. dearly. And yeah. I, love the church. I know you do. I often get these responses from these dear, sweet ladies that say they don't know how people who go through struggles that don't have a church how they do it. You know, and it's true. It's uh, Church family is unlike anything else that love and support each other during difficult times in our lives. Any other prayer request? Our prayer hymn uh, this morning is uh, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. The first verse is on page 420. If you would turn to page 420, and we will sing that song, the first verse, as we go into our time of prayer. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou must do. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning asking your Holy Spirit to breathe on us and for us to be your children and you to be our God. We are so thankful to come into your sanctuary that you care for us like a shepherd over his flock. You know us each by name. And some of us come into this room with heavy hearts and some with joyful hearts. And whichever we come, we pray that you would minister to us and speak to us we would feel your presence. Lord, we pray for Larry Mitchell that you would heal him. Lord, our heart breaks as we've seen the news every day that Russia has invaded its smaller neighbor, Ukraine. Lord, we pray for the peace to come back to that part of the world. We pray for the loss of life to be minimal. And so, Lord, we open it up this time to as Patrick continues to play, that we would just have our own private prayer about this situation of Russia and Ukraine.
Heavenly Father, let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. We we'll continue our time of prayer as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue on with the service, um, we come to our time of tithes and offerings. I want to remind you that we have a offering plate at the door um, for your offering. And as well as that, you can mail it in or do it by direct deposit or online. So thank you so very much for your continued support of the church. We've been able to do so much in this time of need um, during time of COVID and, and other times um, because of your generosity. So thank you so much for that. Our offertory sentence this morning, let's honor God with our tithing. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Let's turn our hearts and minds towards Christ as we listen to our special music. Terry, when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me, why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Yes. 
earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come Stand for the doxology, please. Father, we dedicate all we are and all we have to you on this day as living sacrifices. Help us to show and share your love with others today. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. 
Fire. I think we have a video that we want to show you about the devil. I want to talk to you today about the devil. It's interesting that in our American culture today that people believe in God, but they say, well, we're not quite certain about believing in the devil or not. And I find that interesting because the Bible is very, very clear and points out different places where the devil is real. In fact, Jesus himself had a discussion where he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. And that's going to be our text today. So I want you to open your Bibles to... Um, let me make sure I got the right one, to Matthew chapter 4. And in your blue Bible, that's page 1503, Matthew chapter 4 uh, and page 1503. And we're going to talk about the devil. And I want you to know that the devil doesn't like you. God loves you and the devil doesn't like you. And how many of you have heard that phrase, misery loves company? Okay. And the devil wants as much company in hell as he can find. And he'll pull whoever he can in there, while God, on the other hand, wants you to go to heaven. And Bill, I want to see you in heaven because I want to hear your jokes in heaven, okay? So I love that sense of humor. I want to see all of you in there. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful place. But the devil, not so much. You know, the devil, his job is to tempt us and, and to try and get us to sin. You see, at the beginning of time, the Bible talks about how God made all the angels, and it was beautiful. And the angels had free will, just like you have free will. You have free will to choose to do good or to do bad, to follow God or not follow God. And they had the same choice. And there's this one angel named Lucifer. This one angel named Lucifer who wanted to be like God. In fact, he wanted to be God. And he talked a third of the angels into, hey, let's, let's overthrow God. You know, and, and God said, no, we're not having anything to do with that. He kicked them out of heaven, all of them, a the third of the angels and Lucifer. And so since that time, they have tried to do everything they could to give us as Christians and God a hard time. In fact, all those angels that went Satan's way, we call them demons. And the demons try and trip us up and they tempt us just like the devil does. And the Bible talks about how Satan is like a roaring lion. And, and you're like a little lamb. And, and he, he wants to kill you. You know, sometimes when we get tempted, we, we just hang around temptation too long. You know what I'm talking about? You know those things that God doesn't want us to do and we, we hang around too much? And, but we know that God tells us that there's a way out of this temptation. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. There's a man who went to Niagara Falls and it was in the wintertime. How many of you have been to the Niagara Falls? Isn't it just beautiful? It's gorgeous. I mean, you can just see all the way the Canadian side and the, that immense, immense amount of water that comes over. And it was a time of year where the ice was coming over the falls from the river and big chunks of ice. And inside that ice was actually frozen fish. And seagulls would come down and they'd land on that ice and they'd start eating the fish. A free meal, right? A floating free meal. But if they stayed too long, they would stick to the ice and not be able to get away in time and go down to their death. Temptation's a little bit like that, folks. If we hang on too long, it can take us down to a place that we don't want to be. But I want you to know that um, the title of my sermon is, How Can You Defeat Satan? 
And it's kind of a misleading title because there's only one person that defeated Satan. Isn't that right? And his name is Jesus Christ. And he did it on a cross in Calvary. Oh, Satan thought he had got him. He thought he had licked old Jesus and, and killed him on that Roman cross. But then three days later, what happened? Easter. And he rose from the grave, defeated death, and said, I got you, devil. And he lives forever. And because he lives forever inside our hearts, we're okay. We're okay. Okay? Now, even though you can't defeat the devil on your own, you can get him to flee from you. And, and here's a verse that I want to talk to you about real quick before we get into the Matthew passage. And it's James 4, 7, and it says this, Submit yourself to God and resist the devil. You see that, see that there? Submit yourself to who? God in your life. And then resist the devil. And if you do those two things, what will happen? The devil will flee from you. That's a promise from God. Two things. Give your life to God, submit to the Lord, and then flee from the devil when you get temptation. So if you got this temptation that, that you know, you, fly, you run into, just go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. You're all right. How, how many of you have ever thought, oh, could I be possessed by the devil? You know, sometimes we get that thought and say, could we ever be possessed by the devil? And, and let me answer that quickly for you. If you are a Christian, you cannot be possessed by the devil. Why? Because you are a vessel that has the Holy Spirit in you. I need a new battery. Is it a double A or is it an R U L? It's the double A. So, you cannot be possessed by the devil. And here's why. Because you are a vessel, and inside that vessel is who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Your cup is overflowing with the Holy Spirit. There's no room for the devil in there. You cannot be possessed by the, the devil, okay? So just know that. Submit your life to God. Resist the devil. And then what will the devil do? Flee. Now, can you be oppressed by the devil? Bothered? Tempted? Yes. But that's a big difference between possession and oppression. Do you see what I'm saying? So the devil can oppress you and give you a hard time, but he cannot possess you because you're possessed by God and the Holy Spirit inside your heart. Does that make sense? So I just, I just want you to know that because some people have asked me and said, Pastor Bob, you know, can I be possessed? Now, I've met some, some people who I'm, you may thought, well, maybe they are possessed. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're going to look at the scripture passage because it's important. It's important. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1, and uh, it's on page 1503. And it, here's it. The title is Jesus Tested in the Wilderness. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. So two, two things that are important here. First of all, it's in the wilderness, okay? Now, when you go home, you're going to go home to your nice house with a refrigerator and the cable TV and everything's going to be good. But what if you went home and your home was just the middle of a field out somewhere, out where Doc lives, you know, and you're in the wilderness, you got to live there for a bunch of days, you're in trouble. And so he's in a wilderness, he's in a bad place. And so you've had wilderness situations in your life where life's not so great. You've had loss. Your job's in trouble. You're in the wilderness. You have a broken relationship with someone. So Jesus is in the wilderness and he's being tempted by who? By the devil. It doesn't say he's being tempted by some fairy tale that's out there. By the devil. We live in a, in a country now where everyone says, oh, God is good, and you see butterflies and hearts and, and everything, but they don't realize there's an opposite side to God called the devil that wants to kill you spiritually, and misery loves company and wants you to go to hell with them. You can't believe with one without the other, and the Bible is very clear that tells us that the devil is real. Okay, so it goes on. 
after fasting for 40 days. Wow, I can barely fast for four hours. I don't know about 40 days uh, or even four days. But Jesus fasted for 40 days and he was what? Hungry. Now, if you fasted for 40 days and, and someone put an ice cream sandwich in front of you, you'd be hungry for that ice cream sandwich, wouldn't you? And so the devil knew it. The devil knew it. In verse 3, it said, The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You know, Jesus could have done that just in a snap of a finger, couldn't he? Turn stones into bread. And it just wouldn't be white bread. It'd be wheat bread with cheese on top and some garlic inside and some butter. It'd be good stuff, okay? And then Jesus answered, verse 4, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And if you look in that page, you see that little letter that says A on there? And that means we need to go to the bottom and look at the, the notes on there. And it says A. Jesus was quoting the Old Testament. He was quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. That tells us that when we're tempted by God, know your Bible. Know your Bible. Read it often. Have it in there so that when you are tempted by something, you can say, the Bible says I can get out from this. And then we go back into verse 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, then throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. The devil was, was tempting him with power with power to be able to do whatever he wanted. And Jesus already had that anywhere, anyway. And then in verse 7, here's what Jesus said. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Old Testament, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And if you look down, there's the letter C there. That also comes from Deuteronomy. Quoting the scripture again, Know your Bible. And then in verse Eight. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, all their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Isn't that what it's all about with the devil? If you would just worship me rather than God. Do you remember the Garden of Eden? Remember the serpent? Remember the lie he, he told Adam and Eve? He said, you can be like God. You don't have to follow him. You can be like God. You can do your own thing. Same lie here. Same lie here. And then Jesus responds to him. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then it goes, you see it says that, and it goes back to Deuteronomy. It goes all the way back to the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments. Serve God and serve God alone. It's no different than in uh, 2022, is it? Serve God alone. And then, then look at here in verse 11. This is the best part. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. The devil fleed. Just like the devil will flee from you when you submit your life to God, okay? So I want to share with you today um, some things that Jesus, I mean, I mean, that the devil tempts us with. Know this about the devil. Gossip is the devil's radio. It's the devil's radio. When we get involved in gossip about someone else's life, it's not good. The Bible tells us not to do that. But the, I mean, the Bible tells us not to do that, but the, the devil wants us to do it. Lust is the devil's playground, wanting you to play and frolic all day and night. Greed is the devil's investment plan, wanting you to invest all your time and energy into the resources and earthly possessions rather than what is in heaven. And then there's that five-letter word that starts with a P that's the worst thing of all, and it's pride. Pride gets us into more trouble, I think, than anything else. Trying to be popular, trying to be powerful, trying to have prestige. You know, sometimes even we as Christians can be too prideful and, and say, you know, we can do it. You know, there's this man that, um, 
lived in Kentucky, and the rains were coming down, and the floods were going up. And around his house, the rains got up to the front porch. And he said, I'm not going to worry at all because God's going to save me. God's going to save me. God's going to protect me from the flood. Well, the water kept coming down and kept going up, and it got into his living room. So he climbed on the second floor and said, God's going to save me. And then the water continued to rise and got on the second floor. He had to climb on the roof. And he climbed on the roof and the water came up to the roof. And, and he said, Lord, I know you're going to save me. And he's real prideful about that. And then this guy came by with a rowboat and said, hey, jump in. I'll save you. And he said, no, no, no. God's going to save me. And then the water got up. He was on the tippy top of the of the house and the water was about up to his knees and this helicopter came over and said, grab the rope, I'm going to save you. And he said, no, no, God's going to save me. Well, the waters came up and he drowned dead. And he went up to heaven and he got up to meet with the Lord and said, Lord, why didn't you save me? I was on top of the roof. And the Lord looked and said, what are you talking about? I sent a boat and a helicopter, what more do you want? <laughs> Sometimes we could become more prideful saying, I know it all. Hmm. Satan can tempt you in ways that I want to help you understand that the Bible is the way to refute the devil. If you have a temptation to lie, look up Proverbs 12.22. It says, the Lord detests lying lips. If you have a temptation to gossip, look up Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt tongue out of your mouth, but only things that are good for building up. If you have a temptation for stealing, Exodus 20, 15, thou shalt not steal. If you have a temptation for adultery, Hebrews 13, 4, keep the marriage bed pure, for God will judge the adulterer. If you have cheating, uh, temptation to cheat on your taxes, Jesus said in Mark 12, 17, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. If you have the temptation of drugs or alcohol, Ephesians 5, 18 says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with with the Holy Spirit. Folks, I've seen people in my ministry that get so caught up into temptation that it can kill them spiritually and ruin their lives. I read this story one time about how ranchers in Alaska who have sheep um, have wolves that kill the sheep. And when that happens, they have a unique way to get rid of the sheep. And what they do is they take a knife about that long, big long knife with a big handle on it, and they take it and they, they dip it into a bucket of blood. Maybe they butchered a, a cow or, or a sheep, and they, they'd freeze it. They'd freeze it. And then they'd, they'd pull that out and set this big knife covered with this big ball of, of blood. And they'd go out in the middle of a field, and they'd take that and they'd bury that knife with the frozen ball of blood on top, and then they'd walk away. And at night, the wolf would smell that, that blood. And the wolf would come and get close, and he'd take one lick, and he'd taste that blood. And then he'd take a second, and a third, and a fourth. And before you know it, he's just licking and licking and licking because he just loves the, the temptation of that blood. And it says that he licks that ice blood until his tongue goes numb and he continues to lick until his tongue hits the blade sharp edge of that knife and he cuts his own tongue and the eyes go rolling back on the top of his head and he's in such a frenzy and he dies the next morning laying beside the knife now that, that, that story kind of makes you shiver a little bit doesn't it that's sin that sin that will destroy, destroy a person because a person will see the temptation and they'll just take a little lick. That tastes pretty good. And they'll take another one. And don't let me lie to you say that sin's not fun. It may be fun, but it's also dangerous. And they'll take another lick until the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit saying, stop this, they become numb to it because they've done it so much. And in the end, it can kill you and you can wind up with the devil where misery loves company. Amen? So we need to watch ourselves um, with sin and temptation. Okay? Mark Twain once said, It is easier to stay out than to stay 
it's to, yeah, stay out than to get out. To be a follower of Jesus does not exempt us from temptation, but rather gives us the power to resist temptation. The final verse I want to share with you is a beautiful passage in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is the Apostle Paul. It said, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will provide a way out so that you can endure it. Isn't that great news? That God will not tempt you beyond what you can bear and that when you are tempted, God will provide a back door, a window, sometimes even the front door, to escape and get away from that temptation. I really believe after years of ministry that Pride is the number one sin of humanity. Pride is number one. Those of you that are football fans may remember this. In 1978, the New York Giants were playing the Philadelphia Eagles. And this particular game is called the Miracle on the Meadowland. And you see, in this game, there's only 31 seconds left. And the New York Giants were ahead 17 to 12. Now, those of you that know anything about football, when there's only 31 seconds left and you're ahead of the game, you just take a knee. You just hike the ball, take the knee, the clock runs out, victory. Okay? Does everyone understand that? And the other team doesn't get the ball. Well, the offensive coordinator decided we're going to run one more play because we're going to run up the score. Pride. And so the quarterback... For the New York Giants, hiked the ball, and he went to hand it off to Larry Zonka. And Larry Zonka dropped the ball. And the Philadelphia Eagles, he ran up, grabbed that ball, ran down the end zone, and they ran the game when they should have taken a knee. I think there's a lesson in there for us, folks. Sometimes when temptation comes, we just need to take a knee. A knee to the Lord and not worry about running up the score of our life to look better or be more popular. So this is the message for you today. God loves you, the devil doesn't. God wants you to go to heaven, the devil wants you to be in misery and go to hell. Which one do you want? I vote God, amen? amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we can learn more about the love of God, but also learn some about the hate that the devil has for us. And so may we be people that are faithful to love God in this life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, how many of you know, well, I guess I'll get to that here a little bit. I need to go to this last song. Sorry about that. Um, our hymn of response is My Tribute on page 99. Let's sing that together, My Tribute. Let's stand together, page 99. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things He has done. With His blood He has saved me, with His power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Have a seat, folks. How many of you know uh, Matt Brown at our church? He's the Staff Parish Relations Committee chairperson, and he had surgery on Thursday. And he has an announcement that he wants to share with the church family. And so because he couldn't be here, he placed it on um, video. So those of you at home, those of you here, uh, can hear his message from the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Let's listen to it together. Good morning. As many of you know, I had surgery this past week and I'm unable to attend in person this week. But I have an important message that I need to bring to you from the SPRC. This week, the SPRC was contacted by the district superintendent, Dr. Marty Lundy, 
And we were let know that Bob has been appointed to Middlebury United Methodist Church beginning July 1st of this year. We can't thank Bob enough for his influence and time that he's done and all the programs that he's created and relationships that he's built here at LaPorte First United Methodist Church. Um, it's amazing. I remember the first time I met Bob was uh, trunk or treat, you know, one on one met him anyway. It was trunk or treat. We had cars parked to each other, next to each other, I guess, by fate. And uh, two weeks later, I ended up helping design and lead a build for the playground the following year. Uh, Bob had a unique knack for getting people involved, and I think that's going to be an important thing for us moving forward. Um, I know that change is scary, but I wanted to let you all know that the process is, is moving along, and this is a decision that was made by Bob as a way to restart after the loss of his son, and we definitely wish Bob the best and wish him many blessings moving forward. Over the course of the next couple weeks, um, the SPRC will be getting information from the district superintendent. We met with her last Tuesday, a group of us, and we completed a profile of what we're looking for in a new pastor. That profile will be taken to the cabinet this next week, and they'll start looking at candidates for us to review. And then the bishop will appoint a candidate to our church, and they will go through a process with the SPRC and they will be starting here July the 1st. That being said, um, I'm still learning the process. Of course, it's the first time I've been through it and the first time many of us have been through it, but multiple times for others. And we'll keep you informed as best we can. There's a couple things that I wanna talk about as well. Um, you know, and that's, I can't say enough about the dedication that Bob has had to the church and all of the different work that he's done here. And he'll be truly missed from all members of SPRC as well as many mem members of the church as well. And I think that we should look forward to planning within the next few months, a celebration as, as Bob moves on, um, and then a welcome as well for our new pastor once that decision has been made. Bob's last Sunday preaching for us will be June the 19th, and then we'll have a, a, a short break, and then our new pastor will begin after July the 1st. This is a exciting and scary time, um, but I always remember that God's in control and it's going to be his decisions um, and his will will be done. And I just pray as we go through this that we have a smooth transition. And I can't say enough how much I wish Bob and Nancy the best and how much they're going to be missed by the church and the community. Um, but also that we look forward to a new start with the new pastor as well. And that's really the message that I had this morning. Um, again, I can't be in person today because I had surgery on Thursday and, um, and, I'm able, uh, and I'm unable to get there this morning. Um, I know Bob will talk more about this as well. And he has provided a letter to the congregation that explain, explains a little bit more. We are a great congregation and a great church. And I look forward to what God has for us moving forward. And with that, I would just like to thank everyone and just know that, you know, the next couple months, we're going to have some changes going on, um, but it's all for the good of the glory of God. So God bless and take care. I'd like to invite Nancy up. I, I've written a letter to the church family and there's copies of it when you go out and I'd like to read the letter on behalf of Nancy and I uh, to you. So this is... Um, to the Laporte First United Methodist Church from Pastor Bob and Nancy Vale. As your pastor, I am being appointed to a different church in the coming summer, July 1st, 2022. Bishop Tremble has appointed Nancy and I to serve at the Middlebury First United Methodist Church in the city of Middlebury, Indiana. Nancy and I want to take some time within this letter to share a few things. It has been a joy to serve as your pastor and clergy couple over the past six years. The friendships we have made and the many ministry connections have been rich and a blessing to us both. We have loved this community, church, people, and the many different ways that we have served together making disciples for Jesus Christ. The many mission trips have been wonderful. The Bible studies have been enriching. The many church events have been fun. And the Sunday worship services over the years have been fulfilling. 
To get to know the people of the Laporte First United Methodist Church over the years has been a blessing to both Nancy and myself. Nancy and I desire to open a new chapter in our lives and our ministry. With the loss of our son Daniel, we believe a new beginning chapter will be healthy for both of us as we move forward. The parsonage home that we currently live, Daniel lived there with us. Every time we walk by his bedroom, we remember Daniel. We are sad when we go into our living room and remember the times that he played piano and filled the home with music. And so we believe a new chapter is good for us. We pray for your support and have prayerfully made this decision and look forward to our new start at the Middlebury First United Methodist Church. In the coming weeks, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting with the new prospective clergy person for this church. Please keep them in your prayers as they find a new pastor for the Laporte First United Methodist Church. A new pastor means a new beginning for everyone in the church. Healing. To meet and support the new pastor with your time, talents, gifts, and service. In the coming year, I hope and pray that this pandemic will subside and you will be able to join the worship services and ministry to support your new pastor. In the coming months, two churches will be working to make the transition from one clergy to another. The Staff Parish Relations Committee will be in close communication with you, the church family, to give you the details of the new pastor and how you can help with the transition to welcome this new pastor in July of 2022. Thanks and blessings, Pastor Bob and Nancy Vale. I would expect that within the next two weeks you will be, know, you will be told who your new pastor um, will be. It has been a joy to be here. Um, we're sorry uh, for this decision, but for us and where we're at um, emotionally, we just feel like this new chapter is, is best for us. And um, we know that the SPRC and the bishop and district superintendent are going to give you a wonderful new pastor uh, to lead the church. Do you want to say anything? No? Well, it's, it's been a real joy. Thank you. Let's stand together for the benediction. And again, you can pick up one of these um, letters as you, you go out. May the Lord bless and keep you. His face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May God bless us all until we meet again. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.